Hello everyone, this is Chef Luca from Corbeone Ristorante Italiano in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Today we're going to do a video where I'm going to show you how to make the carbonara. Now, carbonara is a dish that unfortunately here, especially in the United States, is being butchered by so many. There's this misconception about the carbonara, about where the creaminess comes from, and the, some of the ingredients that are used in a carbonara. Today, I will show you how to make a real carbonara the way we make it in Italy, and especially in Rome, or the whole region of Lazio, because carbonara originates from that region. It's a Roman dish, along with the uh, puttanesca, amatriciana, gricia, cacio e pepe, and in Bocca la Romana, those are all dishes that originated in the Lazio region and the Rome region. So today we're going to look at a carbonara. Follow me. Let's go with the ingredients. We obviously have pasta. We're going to use spaghetti, but there are some uh, restaurants in Italy that actually do penne or even rigatoni. Uh, we're going to use spaghetti today. You want to have pepper, fresh eggs, and Pecorino Romano, it has to be freshly grated Pecorino Romano, okay, this is a 24 month old Pecorino Romano. Don't look at this, we'll talk about this later. And we also have guanciale. Now, the guanciale is the portion of the pork cheek. It's got a different texture than either pancetta or bacon. That is the pork belly, no. You don't use that in the carbonara. You make it with guanciale because this is how the authentic Italian Roman recipe calls for. It is a pork cheek. It's got a different texture, it's got a different level of saltiness. Uh, it just brings up the flavor in the dish itself. So use guanciale, pork cheek. It's not easy to find, but if you know where to look, you can find and buy guanciale. Now, this is how you do not make a carbonara. You do not use heavy cream, okay? In Italy, heavy cream is used for desserts, not for food. There are a few exceptions, but very few exceptions. You do not use heavy cream. Also, you do not use onions. Carbonara does not have onions. I had people uh, actually telling me that the carbonara did not, that the carbonara that I serve in my restaurant did not have heavy cream or onions. You're right, it doesn't. And I will never, ever serve a carbonara that has heavy cream or onions. If you want that, eat at some other restaurants, not at Corleone's. So, let's put this back in the fridge with our blog. We're gonna make the carbonara now, I'm gonna show you the whole process. Pasta spaghetti we're going to use today. There's boiling water, salt, boiling water, and in. The pasta is going to cook and it's going to take about seven, eight minutes. Depends when the pasta cooked al dente. Okay, so we're going to, the next step is going to be to prepare our sauce for the carbonara. Our sauce for the carbonara is made with just eggs. As you can see, there's no panna in here. There's no onions in this pan. We're gonna use that to sear the guanciale. The only thing that we're gonna use is we're going to add grated pecorino romano cheese. There she goes. And black pepper. And that's red pepper right there. So then the next thing we're gonna do, oops, we're going to Whisk it quite energically so that we combine the uh, Romano cheese with the eggs. And this is the consistency you want to get. It's a nice creamy sauce with just egg yolks and pecorino. Now, how many egg yolks should you use? Uh, the, it, it depends, really. I mean, eggs don't come in one size, although you have, you know, the small, medium, or large, but they're different. Um, I use smaller eggs, so I actually use four egg yolks, yolks, but they're small. 
The uh, recipe calls for two egg yolks per portion. So if you're looking for one, you use two egg yolks. Uh, for two, four, and so on and so forth. So I use four here because my eggs are a little small. We use them uh, to make the tiramisu, uh, which is something that I'm going to show you in the next video. And the sauce is pretty much ready. As you can see, there's creamy sauce. It's not too thick, okay? If it's too thick, it's not going to be good. That means you use too much pecorino or you use, um, you didn't use uh, enough egg yolk. So there you go, this is what you want. Now that we have the sauce ready, we're going to sear the guanciale. Again, the guanciale is a pork cheek. Okay, I have a pan that's already hot here. I'm just going to add, and many people will probably um, have something to say about this, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of olive oil, okay? Just a little bit. You don't want more than that because the guanciale already has a lot of fat in it. So I'm just using this to create sort of like a non-stick layer so that my guanciale doesn't get burned. Because the guanciale already has a strong taste. If you cook it and too much and you burn it, it's going to be bitter. So I want to make sure that we have the right syrup there. Okay, smoking point, okay? Just gonna put the guanciale and we're going to stir it so that it doesn't burn. And in the meantime, the pasta is cooking, we're searing our guanciale. It's already releasing some of the fat. And the fat is going to also be added to the sauce that gives it that flavor from the guanciale. So we're going to sear it, and I'm going to show you the uh, finished product here in a second. Okay, so now you have the uh, finished guanciale here. As you can see, it's got a nice crispiness to it, but it's not burned. Again, you do not want to burn your guanciale, otherwise it will be too bitter to taste, okay? So this is right about the, uh, uh, the right amount of searing that you want to achieve when searing the guanciale. Uh, as you can see also, it uh, rendered a lot of the fat, which we're going to use not all of it, okay, but we're just going to use some of it to add to the sauce to give it the uh, flavor. I also, uh, you probably noticed that I removed the guanciale from the hot pan because again, it would cook in the hot oil of the fat as rendered and that will burn it. So you do not want to do that. So I took that out. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of the hot oil, okay, there you go. And I'm going to whisk quickly here so that the hot oil does not scramble the eggs, okay? You do not want to make a frittata here. You want to make a carbonara. And there you go. So the egg is still intact. And also the hot oil has pasteurized the egg, okay? So you don't have to worry about salmonella and any of the other food uh, pathogens, okay? Again, the sauce is nice and creamy, and we are pretty much ready. We're just going to try our pasta and see where it's at, okay? I'm going to taste the pasta. I'm gonna throw it against the hood so that if it sticks to the, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna taste it. I'm done for it. It's ready. Pasta goes right into the carbonara sauce. Okay, some of the uh, some of the water is going to go in, so that's going to help. And then we we'll just stir quickly, 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 quickly. Again, you do not want the egg to scramble. You want a nice creamy sauce. As you can see, that's where the creaminess comes from, folks. It doesn't come from the heavy cream. You make desserts with that. It's really good, but it does not go in food. And we are ready to plate it.
and here we go. So now our carbonara is in our plate. As you can see, it's nice and creamy with just the uh, egg yolk and the pecorino. No onions, no heavy cream. This is how a real carbonara should be made. We're going to add the guanciale. I like guanciale and so, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna put all of it in my carbonara. Uh, why? Because I can. Here we go. And that's the carbonara. Now, this is how I present it to my guests here. Uh, another thing that does not go on carbonara, and I've seen that done, is to put parsley. Now, you know how much about parsley. You've seen probably in other video. You do not put on carbonara. If you want, it's just a little go. If you want, you can take just a little bit of cracked pepper and add it to the top. That would be your decoration. And this is the carbonara. Now, should we try it? Absolutely, because I love carbonara. So I have a big fork here from my Italian extensive collection of tasting forks. And let's try. Look at this, folks. Look, this is like creaminess. This is how a carbonara should look like. This is how we make it in Italy, and there's no other way of making it. Buon appetito. The guanciale, the saltiness, the texture of the guanciale, the creaminess of the egg yolk. I can taste the pecorino, the pasta al dente. It's perfect. This is as good as a carbonara gets. It's really, really good. Just a second, I have a phone call. Hello? Only father. Yes, oh, absolutely. Oh, you were watching a video about the carbonara? But you're in the wrong. You know when to get carbonara. Oh, you want mine? Holy father, I'm out here. Yes, of course I can bring it to you immediately. Holy Father, for you, anything. Ciao, Francesco. Ciao. It was the Pope. You saw my video? He wants a carbonara. I gotta take a flight to Italy. Bye.